Growing up, Rucker enjoyed playing football. Early on, like a lot of young boys, he thought he might be good enough for the pros. But once in high school, he changed his focus to music. I realized I wasn't going to play in the NFL. And so I told myself I need to concentrate on the singing thing. And that was my high school when I quit playing football and got in the Middleton Singers. We were a great, great show choir. We were one of the best in the state. And, and we would just, uh, that was just life for me. That was the reason I went to school. You know, I mean, I, I was an okay student. I was a B student. And uh, I was one of those kids that didn't have to study. You know, they just, you know, I, I could just go to school and get a B. But it was, Milton Singers was everything for me. It was why I got up in the morning, why I, I went to school. It was, it was to be part of that group that I thought was so great. I think a lot of people would be surprised to find that in, in your home that you listen to country music. Yeah. For me, it was the radio. It was, I, I just, I thought it sounded great, you know, and then Kenny Rogers came along and that was huge for me. I mean, that was when, Kenny Rogers was that guy that was awesome for me because I could hear him, you know, you flip through a country station, you hear a Kenny Rogers song, then you hear a Buck Owens song, and then you flip to a pop station and you hear Kenny Rogers song, and then you hear a, a you know, a Cheap Trick song. And it, for me, it was, I just thought this guy is just, I just thought he was great. He was, when I was a kid, he was one of the probably biggest three, three biggest influences in my musical life because he was just everywhere. Coward of the County and, and they, they were so real and vivid and, and the stories were so, you know, you knew what it was about. But I just loved Kenny Rogers. He was, he was huge for me. Well, his got to know when to, both yeah, of them the, got the to gambler. know when, when to walk away it remains a classic to this Absolutely. day. I remember <laughs> being young and hearing The Gambler and just going, you know, thinking, how do you sit down and come up with that? You know, how do you sit down and come up with a story that that's vivid? And I mean, you could see it. You, it was like a movie in your head when you listened to that song. I, I loved him. Well, Charlie Pride was, to my knowledge, the first singer of African-American heritage who really cracked through in the country. Were you aware of Charlie Pride? Oh, absolutely. The whole, everybody was aware of Charlie Pride. He was, you know, it was, it was one of those things when I did listen to country music, my mom would always say, you know, you know, make sure you, you know, you know who Charlie Pride is? You know, of course I know who Charlie Pride is. He was, he was so big because he was, like you said, he was the only African-American doing it. Kiss an angel, good morning. Over like the devil when you get back home. You know, I was, that was a shocker for me when I started having hits in country music and, and I didn't think about it. And then I had my first, hit, my first hit and somebody came up and told me I was the first African-American in 30 years or something. Probably since Charlie music. Pride. Yeah, since Charlie Pride. And that was, I was like, wow, that's just crazy to think about. But Charlie was, he was big in, in that community. He was, he was somebody doing something that we weren't supposed to do. And he was, he was proving everybody wrong, so he was big for us. You mentioned Kenny Rogers. And one of the things that you said to yourself, you'd hear these great songs, The Gambler and other songs, and say, how does he do that? How does he put that together? Now you write songs. You write most of the songs you sing. Tell us about the process. How do you do that? For me, it's, I, no matter if I'm writing by myself or I'm writing with somebody, I always write about something about my life. Every, most songs I write are about my life at some point. Maybe if, even if it was 20 years ago, you know, you just put yourself in that place again and write it. And, and I just find being honest in your songs are, is a lot better than trying to write some fiction. You know, you've written you know, songs that were fiction, but most of the songs I write, at some point, it's about me. And so when you're telling a story about you, it seems to be a lot easier for me. Well, you get an idea, you think of some words or a title of a song, do you write it down right away? What do you do? Or you wake up in the middle of the night? I've done all that. I've, I've, I've been at a point where I wrote it down, and now we're lucky the iPhone is so great that, you know, like I've, I've lost so many songs because I, you know, you come up with this great idea in your head, you go, I'll write that down later, and you can't remember it later. And now with the iPhone, you just, you know, sing it into the voice memo, and you, it's there forever. And, and so that, that's really made songwriting a lot easier for me because you just come up with these ideas and just put them right down, and then you can go finish it later. I wouldn't say you're one of the few, but it's not everybody who writes their own songs and then sings their own songs. I consider myself a songwriter, and, and so I love singing songs about me and songs about my life, and so if you're gonna do that, you gotta, you gotta write them. 